listen, I'm calling you because I'm about to review a pho video, right? And I don't feel like getting lit up by the internet this week. I just, I can't, my, my fragile mind can't take it right now. Chef Brian Sow here, not your typical chef. And today I'm gonna be reacting to Uncle Roger finally found decent pho, Jet Tila. Before we do anything else though, Big shout out to my new sous chef level patrons, Tiffany Langston, Masura Gaming, and Tony Penguin 8 Thank you so much for your support. And for the rest of you that are watching, if you've been enjoying the show and want to support me further, be sure to visit the link in the description below. There, it'll take you to my Patreon page where you can take advantage of some awesome perks. Also, I feel the need to address the room. You may be wondering, where the heck am I? Well, my basement flooded really bad again and the plumbing work has to be completely redone. So my life is in a bit of disarray. I am now moved into my band's rehearsal room. The floor is completely torn out and we are redoing the plumbing, but that also means that I won't be able to pick the winner of the snapback giveaway because I don't even know where the snapback is anymore. I promise you I will pick the winner once all this kind of goes back to normal not to mention i just opened a sandwich shop yeah things are pretty crazy right now if you're new to the channel i am a professional chef with 18 years of experience i've defeated bobby flay on the food network show beat bobby flay as well as run the world-renowned kitchen of beauty in essex located right here in new york city the views and opinions expressed in this show are exactly that they're just my views and opinions based on my years as a culinary professional but i don't always get it right so if if you have something to add or a correction to make, let me know in the description, in the description, in the comments below, because I always love to learn, but more importantly, I'd love to hear from you. With that out of the way, let's react to some shit. Today, Uncle Roger review American chef Jet Tila making pho. I like this guy. Uncle Roger didn't know the boy from up, grow up now, and become celebrity chef Fuyo. Let's hope he make pho properly and don't make our ancestor mm. cry. Hey guys, I'm Jet Tila, and this is Ready Jet Cook. Now, I know some of you are- That's actually a really clever show name. Uh, I am, uh, I'm kind of familiar with Jet Tila. I like everything that I've seen him in. I think he's very well-spoken, but also he really knows what he's talking about, and he's really charismatic and great to watch. Anyway, let's keep watching. Rise at the idea of quicker pho. Quicker pho. But let's do some quick time calculations here. Two days for traditional pho, Versus two hours? What, what, what? Two day for fur? Uh oh. Fur take eight hour only. How you use two day to make fur? Uh, so in uh, an FYI, actually not an FYI, you guys know this already. So I'm a Western trained chef and I can tell you right off the bat, uh, beef stock is typically cooked for 10 hours. Now I make sandwiches all fucking day. I forgot all my fundamentals. Oh, I can't find it. I'm sticking with 10 hours. I'm pretty sure it's 10 hours. Actually, no, I do want to look this up because I don't feel like getting fucking lit up by the internet this week. I, I have too much going on and can't deal with it. I mean, I'm doing the pho video. The last time I did some kind of pho video, the Rachel Ray pho video, I mentioned that maybe it has bay leaf. I took an educated guess and uh, Jesus Christ, you guys let me know that there's no bay leaf in pho broth. All right, now I know. I got it. Listen, normally it's just left overnight on a simmer, but I'm gonna call in the reinforcements. I'm gonna call in one of I'm gonna call one of my chef buddies, Derek Prince. He's he's a fucking nerd. And he will, and I mean that in a nice way. So let's 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 FaceTime him. He may not even pick up. Yeah, he picked up. Hey, you're literally on my web series. You're on Pro Chef Reacts right now. Every oh, <laughs> Uh, I'm doing. Wait, wait, sorry. I have to bring your the mic closer to the. Uh, I mean the phone. I'm really tired, dude. But um, <laughs> I'm bringing the phone closer to the mic. All right, listen. I'm calling you because I'm about to review a pho video, right? And I don't feel like getting lit up by the internet this week. I just, I can't, my my fragile mind can't take it right now. So, I was saying how for a traditional French beef stock. Let me know if I'm right or wrong, because normally when we do this, we just let it cook overnight on the stove on a simmer. But traditionally, it's supposed to be 10 hours, right? I didn't know there were rules, but I guess the French people have rules for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> All right. We're, we're just going to stick with 10 hours because we usually leave it overnight on the stove anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's, got, it's about 10 hours. And then, I mean, but, it, but, it, but, but it's subjective because, I mean, you're going for consistency. Who cares about time? I, I guess I think the French would tell me if I had my heat right, you know. Yeah, true that. All right. So you, you got that internet. Chef Derek Prince, who, who now runs Beauty in Essex after me, he says... 10 hours is is fine but we just leave it overnight all right say bye to, say bye to everybody derek all right goodbye world <laughs> it's later man thanks all right you got it good let's keep watching halfway and then going on road trip is it hi uh two days for traditional pho versus two hours pho broth need time to extract the flavor i went through all that to talk about french br f beef uh stock versus pho and they're talking about two days. Uh, that makes a lot of sense, sense because a traditional beef pho broth, I mean, it's really worked. And even though it's such a clear soup or a, a very clear broth is usually with meat, um, stock is with bones, but for all intents and purposes, let's just call it a pho broth. Well, it is a pho broth because you put the raw pieces of meat. Anyway, even though it's very clear and light, it's actually texturally still really thick. And that is one of the distinguishing factors of a really delicious pho broth. And you're only gonna get that by really working it for a long period of time and two days is right on the money. So you're telling me you're gonna do this in two hours? You know what? If anyone's gonna get this right, obviously it is based on the title, it's gonna be Jet Tila. Let's keep watching. Two hours pho? <sighs> Uncle Roger's skeptical. I got bad feeling about this video already. So for the quicker beef pho, I'm using a thin slice steak cut. Which... Mm. Ah, thin slice steak? Yep. Correct. Already better than Nice Rachel pho. Have you seen that? The th oh gosh, that was a bad one. It was like cut like a half inch thick. Let's even give her the benefit of the doubt. Quarter inch thick. Still way too thick. Yeah, Rachel's beef pho was just... Uh, outrageously bad and uh, signature uh, a signature quality of a good pho broth with beef is always really thinly sliced meat always no exceptions to that one none if you have one go watch it it's terrible and you know what while uncle roger's mentioning it make sure you go to uncle roger's original video if you haven't already leave a comment a thumbs up help it out on the algorithm not that it really needs it but again i'm super appreciative to uncle roger not demonetizing all my videos uh, <laughs> reacting to his stuff you speak that thicker than lizzo <laughs> these are the rice stick noodles for Correct. In case you mess up your first batch. Also, when I was a kid, stocking these shelves, they were my favorite things to stock, not like those 50 pound rice bags. Wait, you, you Asian kid, but you don't like to stock rice? <laughs> I, uh, what kind of fake Asian are you? Asian people, we buy rice, we buy the biggest set, 10 kilo, 20 kilo. But this nephew Jet right here, he buy- that, That's a very unflattering shot of Jet right now. Rice like how white people buy rice, just tiny packet. Hi, uh, Uncle Roger want to say to white people, who you buy the small packet rice for? <laughs> Baby bird? Is baby butt on diet? All right, I totally don't agree with Uncle Roger on this part. No Asian kid enjoyed lugging fucking rice bags around. However, did we have a choice? No, we did not. So the last thing we're gonna need for pho mm. is fish sauce. It might fish sauce, be correct? If you're not mm -hmm. using it, but it's ingredient good sauce. Three crabs brand. I like that brand a lot. Vietnamese and Thai cuisine. Yeah, I know. They showed a shot of a Korean restaurant. That those characters there were Korean. Uh, Korean characters are, um, well, I guess to you know most other people that are not of Asian descent will uh, think all Asian writing looks the same. But even though I don't read Korean, I read a little bit of Chinese. I don't read Japanese. Uh, there are very distinguishing characteristics between these three written languages. And uh, they showed B-roll of a Korean restaurant. So obviously the cameraman was a white dude. Hi, uh, why suddenly like music video? His nephew Jack gonna start twerking. Just cook, just cook. So I'm gonna start with vegetables and then move on to making my stock. So Mise en place? Onion, kind of onion, correct? I'm gonna take the top, the bottom. Oh, shit. 
Derek Prince just texted me. He said, the Michelin website says eight to 10 hours. Boom, yeah, booyah shaka. I remember that one right. And then I like to peel the onion while it's in half. Like no, no, don't slice onion in half. It's gonna make the broth dirtier. Just throw whole onion in broth. Mm. Nah, nah, I don't agree with Uncle Roger there necessarily. But you know what? All you, you know, OG Vietnamese people who know how to make awesome pho, how do you do your onions? Do you, do you cut it in half? Do you, in fact, put it in whole? I'm thinking on it. My buddy Alice, shout out to Alice Chow. I don't think she puts it in whole. I don't remember. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. Today broth. This is a really nice kind of hybrid. Oh, you know what? Maybe it is whole because it's being left for two days. You're going to have no problem extracting the flavor. So I'm making an educated guess version where you get the aromatics from all your spices, but you're not going to sit there and roast bones and literally wait two days. This Okay, he taking shortcut, but at least he know the basic offer. Maybe this video, okay. You know, when the kids are kind of in from school, they're sick, the weather's really cold, there's nothing more comforting or warming than having a nice bowl of noodles and pho. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wait, what, 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 what he say? You know, when the kids are kind of in from school, they're sick, there's nothing more comforting than having a nice bowl of noodles and pho broth. Okay, pho broth comforting, correct. But nephew Jack, I hope when your kid's sick, you don't just feed them pho. Bring them to doctor. Daddy, I got COVID. And he go, shut the fuck up, just eat your pho. As you can see with the ginger, I've just left the skin. Okay, he sliced faster extraction. To get a lot of surface area for the Mmm, I think I was talking over it when he was talking about the onion, but uh, he this just clicked that he probably mentioned it for the onion. He specifically said for the ginger, he's cutting it to increase the surface area to more easily extract the flavor from the product. So the more you chop it up, the more surface area you're creating and the easier it is going to be to extract flavor. So, you know, like Kay's video, Kay's rice video, she was chopping the garlic and just leaving in these giant chunks. She's not, well, she singed it to death, but that is gonna be harder to extract flavor from because it's such bigger, big chunks versus if you minced it, okay? So let's keep watching. With the scallions, I'm String just onion, them into thin slices. <laughs> these are red serranos. They're kind of the perfect chili. Chili good. A ton of these. And the last ingredient is gonna be lime. Mm. Uncle Roger like his chopping technique. Very smooth, very good. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so uh, this is a good, ah, actually, <laughs> Ooh, ah. So uh, this is a great example of really good knife technique. I keep mentioning uh, a good sign of an experienced cook typically is the way they hold the knife. So they're gripping the blade, not having their finger extended out. Normally I would show you an example with the knife, but my life is upside down right now. But let's observe how he's cutting. And you'll notice the blade never really leaves the cutting board and it's just a very efficient motion watch uh not there <laughs> there's a skin on it so he actually does have to lift the knife up okay you see that the tip of the knife hasn't left the cutting board see and he's able to basically slide the knife and he's just working really efficiently but you'll see in the next scene he keeps the other hand in a tiger claw shape and that will prevent him from cutting his fingertips off and it's much safer to do it that way. Never stick your fingertips out. Also another sign of an inexperienced cook. Them into thin slices. These are red serranos. They're kind of the perfect chili. Chili good. Yeah, you see? Anyway, you saw it. He was holding his basically fingertips in tiger claw shape. I'm just cutting the wedges off the side. Mm. Lime correct also. A little seed pot alone. The first spice is star anise. Mm -hmm. A little star. Star anise good. If you think about it. All what? Christmas. It smells like Christmas. Christmas, if you think about it. Star anise remind you of Christmas. Nephew Jack must be from really nice family. Because I'm Roger growing up, Christmas just remind me of alcohol and parent arguing. <laughs> so star anise is there. Close. Correct. Anise doesn't, anise doesn't remind me of uh, Christmas whatsoever, but that's just me. Close, correct? Those look like little Close? Kind of reedy mm -hmm. sticks with a little spice ball. And yes, I didn't see bay leaf there, guys. Okay, I get it. There's no bay leaf in pho broth, all right? Cinnamon, a 
know you've got cinnamon good laying around from the house. Cinnamon, yep. In a little plate. Awesome. I've got some cheese. Ah, all right. Got cheesecloth. So he's gonna put all that stuff into a cheesecloth, tie it up, put it into the broth. He's not gonna waste a fucking tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> like Rachel Ray did. Cheesecloth. Cheesecloth. I'm gonna lay all the spices in. Mm -hmm. And they're really oh ah, that's Sacho. He know his shit. That good technique. But he just missing fennel, cardamom, and coriander seed. Maybe that okay. He making quick fur. Maybe those things harder to get where he's from. Uncle Roger can forgive that because his technique all correct so far. I'm just wrapping it up into a nice clean little packet. You know, Uncle Roger mentioned the cardamom, fennel, and stuff like that. I think though, so the core of the spices is going to be the anise, the cinnamon, and the clove. And I think the other stuff, while very common, um, it's it's almost like the same thing as Sunday gravy with Italian families. They're all pretty much the same core ingredients, but every family does it a little differently. Maybe one family does it with white wine. Maybe one family does it with no wine. Maybe one family does it with red wine. And I think the the scenario of those other spices that uncle roger mentioned in specific are probably something similar let me know in the comments this off and be able to pull it in and out of the stock so let's go to the claw broth first thing we're going to start with is beef what i know no Control. Beef. some of you're going to give me a hard time yo i like that about tila he's just calling it as it is some of you are going to give me a hard time but he's identifying from the beginning this is going to be a quick fub rock but i need you to trust me trust me on this see yes and that's another thing like a really confident chef when they take uh something traditional and make it their own they're confident in executing the dish but they are when they're presenting it as their own, they do ask you to trust them. It's even the same scenario at my sandwich shop. I have this one sandwich that is like a banh mi vibe, but it's not a banh mi whatsoever. It's just the best way to describe it. It's called the Peking Turkey Sandwich. And uh, it, it, it has bean sprouts and fresh cilantro and pickled carrot and stuff like that, but it's using turkey and cheddar cheese and sriracha and hoisin dressing. So it gets the vibes, that's my take on it. And when customers order it, I describe it as a banh mi, but I'm asking them to trust my palate. And that's exactly what Jet's doing here. Okay, at least he anticipated oh. Uncle Roger reaction. <laughs> well, Uncle Roger, you know, uh, <laughs> check yourself, all right, Jet? Jet did not make this video for you okay well, let's get that straight don't just use beef base like that just try to make broth properly hiya trust me on this but okay uncle roger trust you i'll get you to delicious fa. beef base is exactly as its name implies it gives you that nice beef flavored foundation a really quick note on fish sauce now you know the bottle that's been sitting in your fridge for about a year it's time to get rid of it because it's probably gone opaque correct and totally dark like soy sauce, really fresh fish sauce should be amber and mm. totally translucent. Wait, wait, mm -hmm. what? No, no, that too much fish sauce. Look at how much he pouring. Okay, actually, I would kind of agree with that if I was making it for someone else, but I like a lot of fish sauce almost to the funky point, and my personal preference for fish sauce is sun aged fish sauce you guys should look it up i am not sponsored by them but i genuinely like it and uh it's it's pretty concentrated and funky and that's how i personally like it. fish sauce that's the first big mistake he made so much fish sauce for what also i thought you just measure out fish sauce in the little bowl that's the correct amount why suddenly you just I would agree with that from the whole again i prefer more fish sauce but i would agree with uncle roger the quantity that he had in that cup is pretty accurate for that quantity of uh, broth that he's making bottle hiya we're just drinking fish sauce now the pot so small your broth 50 percent fish sauce what are you doing <laughs> what are you, you doing a <clears throat> little more salt because fish sauce is uh, definitely on that seafood side salt correct straight salt to give a clean saltiness mm. <sighs> yeah this guy really knows his he has a great palate uh, this reminds me of like talking to my dad my mom would be like oh i used kosher salt and my dad would get pissed off at her like why would you use kosher salt just just use regular salt all salt is the same and like first couple times i chimed in like dad you know actually no not all salts are the same it's like what do you know boy i was like well, I graduated from culinary school and I'm, anyway, he would not listen to me. Now I just let him rant on. But yeah, there you get 
um, salt, you can get different profiles of salts from different sources of products that contain salts or salts themselves. So Himalayan salt, table salt, kosher salt, everything from the texture to the grain structure that is texture. <laughs> so the point I'm making is even the texture of salt, when it touches your tongue and dissolves, will have an effect of how you perceive it to taste. It's pretty fascinating. So in this scenario, he's saying, hey, you know, the salt content from a fish sauce will be fishy, but if you put just straight up salt, it is a cleaner source of salt. And he already put in a lot of fish sauce. I'm salivating about it, um, but I tend to, I like to season or salt my food for it, what I call the right way. And especially in a professional kitchen, people don't pay you to be a little bitch about your salt, okay? They're paying you to make the dish fucking delicious. And guess what? Salty food is delicious. Lots of flavors with a little bit of sugar. Oh, Jesus. I thought that was more salt. Oh, uh, yeah. Sugar correct, but that too much sugar. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Uncle Roger. Upon first glance, that looks like a lot of sugar. But typically for pho, they use the rock sugar, the Asian rock sugar that comes in a bag and or a box that's more amber in color. But then again, Jet may be using white sugar because he is showing how to make this uh, pho broth with your everyday home products that can be found in a Western kitchen or in a Western supermarket, rather. Pot, so much sugar, so much fish sauce. You eat this, you're gonna smell like the ocean and taste <laughs> like diabetes. <laughs> Ginger and onion. I'm gonna let this Ginger and onion. What, what? You need to char it first, huh? Mm -hmm. I just put onion and ginger in like that. Charring onion, bring out more flavor. You even have gas stove, just put the onion on the fire mm -hmm. for two minutes and that okay. Charring is definitely important. Even It also adds to the color too. Onion too white, you need onion of color. For fur broth, onion is like Auntie Helen clothing. You need to burn it. <laughs> Come to a simmer for about 40 minutes and let the onions and garlic make 40 minutes. the broth. Mm. Last step to finish this broth. I guess it's okay in shortcut. Spices from this. Spice good. Spice go in good. To not oversteep these. You're going to want to simmer the spices for about 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah. Mm. I distinctly taste all the spices, but they're not overpowering. So it's time for the sachet to go away. So my broth is. Let me show you how to build this bowl. We're starting with some rice. Ah, noodle time. Mm. Oh, you see how soft that noodle is? So. He more than likely, I don't see water in that bowl right now, but he more than likely pre-soaked it. It's gonna get the rice noodles soft. And then when he goes to cook it, only has to like really flash cook it, get it hot, get it just a little softer, tiny bit of a chew, and that is it. You don't want to go from basically from raw into the water. It'll work, but texturally, I think it's way better when you soak the rice noodle first. And soft, you can also correct fresh yep. noodles here. I'm gonna bundle them into the basket yep. and just give them a really quick dip to cook. Colander for yep. noodle, okay. <laughs> Don't use it for rice. So just a few seconds in the hot water. Correct. Well, and then the texture look very good. See, see how bouncy it look? That good texture. So noodles are in this. Mm. Entry part. My favorite faux combo is fully loaded, meaning every single garnish plus a ton of sriracha. Good, and a good, ton of correct, sauce. correct. And if you're going to do the rare thin beef, make sure you to put it on top because it looks really cool there. Right, this is so thin that when that hot broth hits it, it's going to cook it right away. Exactly. It's sliced so thin. The temperature of the broth itself will basically instantly cook it. And uh, it's, I'm getting really hungry actually. Right. Mm, correct. Make sure that your broth is ripping hot. Because mm -hmm. you want it to cook the meat mm. and then really oh. marry mm -hmm. the flavors together. Mm -hmm. oh. Favorite dish. I would have taken out the. <laughs> Do a little more garnish. That looks so good. <laughs> and you. So let, let's. I love where I paused it. If Jordan can put up B-roll right now of Rachel's bowl of pho, she used such a shallow bowl. You can see that Jet clearly used a soup bowl that has higher walls and that'll actually help insulate the heat better. The, the wider the opening of the bowl is and the shallower it is, the cooler, uh, the quicker it'll cool. Don't forget like, the cilantro is cool, the bean sprouts and the lem lime juice you put in there, all that stuff is actually gonna cool your product. But the more mass you have, the more it's going to insulate heat, 
And one quality of, and I am, I am literally drooling thinking about it right now, but one quality of a really good pho is that it's really nice and hot. Uncle Roger's so aroused right now. <laughs> Sorry, children. Clear internet history. Feel free to do a little more garnish on the top. Jet touched that with his touch that chili with his raw hands. I hope he doesn't touch his pee pee later. Sprouts, and you are good to go. Mm -hmm. I would put in way more bean sprouts personally. So hoisin. Hoisin, sriracha. Mm -hmm. It's a total choice situation. Some people like to shoot it in and mix it in. No, don't mix it. Yeah, I don't mix. Uh, my cousin, Austin Liang, if you're watching this, that motherfucker basically empties a sriracha and hoisin bottle when he eats his pho. It is fucking disgusting. I don't know what's wrong with you. Oh, whatever, man. You're my cousin. I'm, 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 uh, I, I'm supposed to, you know, still like you, even though I think that's kind of gross. Anyway, uh, I don't do that. <laughs> I never put it into my broth. I like to take the stuff out, like the beef or the tendon or the tripe that's usually in there. I get the combination type with all that stuff. And then I dip it into the hoisin and stuff. Oh, mm. oh. I, uh, the broth take eight hours to make. Don't just whack sauce in there. You're gonna kill the broth. Show the broth mm -hmm. some respect. Mm -hmm. I like to shoot it in and mix it into the soup or some people like to dip. I'm more of a dipper. Mm. Than I have a whole new level of uh, respect for you. You see, you see how cooked that beef is? It's sliced very thin. It's going to be tender. It's like slightly pinkish. That oh, That is spot on. Remember I mentioned that uh, when, when Jet was pouring the broth, there were some chunks of the cooked onion from the broth. I never seen that, but I have seen raw sliced onion in it very commonly. Yeah, you see that? Man, that looks good really good and you know what uh, i don't want to drag on too much even though i tend to do that in all the videos but this is a great example of <laughs> of the potential of showing a shortcut to a classic dish still respecting what the dish is but you know what it's you have a base knowledge that is strong enough you know where to take those little shortcuts as opposed to taking a friend you know rachel ray's French style freaking beef broth and using that as your base, Jet is still, I don't know how to describe it, but like I said, he clearly knows what he's talking about and what are the flavor profiles that you need to achieve to get as close to the authentic thing as possible versus Jamie Oliver, where he's literally just throwing Asian ingredients together and saying egg fried rice here or red curry that's yellow or, you know, fucking uh, green curry that's milky, minty colored. Like, it's not how it works. And I know that that broth is not going to have that same wonderful texture that a two-day cooked broth will have, but this will hit the mark. And that is a perfect example of if someone wants to make this at home really quick, the day of, didn't think about ahead about what they wanna make, uh, you know, for dinner two days from now, you know, they're just like, I feel like having pho today. That is the recipe to do it with. Kudos to you, Jet. Kudos to you, baby. Kudos. I still maintain that this is a, still a great way to respect a pho, but showing you where to take the shortcuts and still hitting the mark. Really good stuff. I'm just repeating myself from earlier. Out of 10, I'm going to give Jet's, uh, you know, quick pho broth. I'm going to give it a solid, I'm going to give it a solid eight. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. Solid eight. Hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did making it. Please let me know in the comments below what you would like me to react to next. And also, if you're still watching all the way to the end, thank you very much. I would love if you checked out if you checked out, if you looked me up on Instagram at Chef Brian Sow, I greatly appreciate it. And with that said, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.